on our way to Vienna. I am running late, as always seems to be the case when it comes to going to the train station. So I'm walking really fast. I hope there's not too much background noise. Um, yeah, so I feel like I need to concentrate on walking and not <laughs> um, talking right now. So I will catch up with you once we get to Vienna and we are going to do some book shopping today. So I will see you soon. to the first store on my list which is actually not a bookstore but a secondhand store run by an Anglican church and I totally meant to record in there but it was super duper small and there were just so so many books that I just got totally like enraptured and involved in picking out what I wanted again please excuse all of the background noise I'm waiting for a tram now to go to my second stop. Anyway, I ended up getting a ton of books there, like so many that I think I'm going to go get a storage locker at the train station so I don't have to carry them around all day. Um, and then off to my second place, which is an actual bookstore. And I hope that I will remember to get some actual footage of the books there. Um, so I will see you once I get the tram and I'm in that next place. super super windy so my apologies for 
background noise. Hopefully I will be able to actually use this clip. Um, so yeah, I went to three bookstores. Um, I will show you a haul of what I got when I get back to Linz. Um, I took a break and I got some Starbucks and then I still have lots of time left. Um, my train is not until much later tonight, so I figured why not check out a UNESCO World Heritage Site in between a shopping. So I do still have one more bookstore that I want to make sure that I get to. Um, and while I am here and they are easily accessible, I want to go to Ikea and TK Maxx, which is Europe's version of TJ Maxx or Marshalls. Um, I am still looking for like home decor type stuff. Um, on my list of things I really want are some fake plants and I need some more silverware. I keep stopping and starting because um, people keep coming and I still have a fear of talking on the camera in front of people so I don't remember exactly what I was saying but I'm hoping to get some decor type stuff, travel themed, book themed. There are some like nature -y things that I like, like birds and trees. Um, so I'll be looking for those types of things at Ikea and TK Maxx, which again, I think I said in <laughs> the clip before I stopped talking, but I don't remember. Um, and so yeah, I already have a ton of books to take back, so I can't get too much decor stuff. But I'm gonna enjoy the palace grounds for a little while longer before I head back toward the city and um, do my last shopping and then eventually head home. So I will catch up with you later. yesterday and I have quite a few things to show you so I have my coffee um, if you want to grab your coffee we can settle in for a pretty big book haul so I don't know if I've ever explained this but there are a lot of built-in shelves in the apartment that I moved into here in Austria and I, being the book hoarder that I am, really wanted to fill them with books. Um, and I've brought a fair number over from the US and I've bought probably more than I should here and it's a problem for a couple of reasons. The first being that if I like the books, I'm obvious, or if I invested a fair amount of money in them, I'm obviously going to want to bring them back with me when I eventually move back. And um, shipping internationally is ridiculously expensive. So I don't really have the money to buy tons and tons of new books, especially, and then I don't necessarily want to go through the agony of having to choose what to take back and what not and whether it's worth it to ship and who knows how much money I'll have at that point and blah blah blah. So I decided I wanted to find out if there were any used bookstores around to sort of fill my shelves with books that I didn't pay a lot for so I could maybe feel less guilty about passing them on or just leaving them here when I am done in Austria, whenever that may be. 
So I found a couple of options in Vienna. Of course, where I live in Linz, there really is not a lot of, um, at least from what I found so far, there aren't a lot of places to get English books in general, let alone secondhand ones. So I did some research into what was available in Vienna and I found a couple of places and I am going to talk about those in case you were ever in Vienna and in the market for secondhand books and show you what I got. Okay, so enough of me talking. Let's get to what books I got. Um, so, as I mentioned, the first place that I went, which I know I didn't actually get any footage of because so it's the secondhand store that's run by an Anglican church in Vienna. Um, so everyone there speaks English, which is great. And they have tons and tons and tons of books in English. The problem is this is all in like a super duper tiny room, like just moving along the shelves to get to the books is a tight squeeze. And that's if there's no one else looking. And yesterday there were several other people looking. So, um, I was just really focused on finding books and not on filming the atmosphere of the place. Anyway, all of the paperbacks there are two euros, but they also have a deal of five paperbacks for five euros. So I ended up getting, oh, 16 or 17 books at that place, but only paid like 17 euros, which is amazing. And so the books fall into a couple of different categories. One is like, old favorites that I love and would love to have on my shelves for like nostalgia and just book love purposes and again because I felt like you know paperbacks are two euros or one euro if you buy five it's okay if I already have copies of them in the United States like I'll be fine passing them on to a student or a friend when I move out eventually um, the other category was books that I have like had on my to be read list for a while and thought like I might as well get copies here and maybe I'll actually read them. And the other ones were things that weren't really on my radar but sounded good um, or are like new releases and I would like to read them. And again, like I won't feel as guilty if I don't get to them or end up not liking them because again, they're only a euro each. So anyway, let's actually look at these books. Um, so these are all from the church bookstore. So the first one I got was Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. This is the category of um, books that I love for nostalgia. So I love Everything Everything. I also got With the Fire and High by Elizabeth Acevedo and Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. So those are my nostalgia book love books. Then I have the um, books that I've been wanting to read and haven't gotten to and finding a copy of them was sort of serendipitous and hopefully now I will read them because I have them on my shelves here and I have more limited books. So I got Little Brother by Cory Doctorow, um, the whole Chaos Walking trilogy, so these are not in order. <laughs> The Knife of Never Letting Go, The Ask and the Answer, and Monsters of Men, all by Patrick Ness. And these are also books that I have at home already, and these were not in great shape. Um, for the most part, I tried to only get books that were like in really good condition, um, like close to new looking, or like maybe just a tiny bit of damage. These are the most beat up ones that I got, but I'm okay with it because again, I have copies at home and um you know if I don't end up liking them I can just pass them on to someone or recycle them and I don't feel that bad about it and this one kind of falls into this category so this book is called Never Evers by Tom Ellen and Lucy Iveson and I love like love 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 their book Freshers um, that's what it was called in the UK. I assume it's called Freshman in the US. Um, and I've read their other book that, again, it's called Lobsters in the UK, but it had a different title in the US and I don't remember what it was. So I didn't know about this. Anyway, um, backtrack. 
Freshers I got when I went to Yolk a couple of years ago in 2017, I think. That's the Young Adult Literature Conference that's part of London Comic Con. Um, what was my point? So I met them, they were at Yolk, and they were promoting that book, Freshers. And I read it on a train and was like snort laughing in public. So if anyone <laughs> writes a book that's that funny, like I want to read everything else that they've written. So I didn't know about this book. I don't know if it published in the US or not, but when I saw that it was by them, I had to pick it up. And then the last one that I got was Magnus Chase and the Ship of the Dead by Rick Riordan. Um, I know that I read the first Magnus Chase book, and I think that I read the second one. I must have, because I don't think Alex shows up until the second one, right? Anyway, I don't think I've read Ship of the Dead, and I do think that Ship of the Dead is the third one. So I picked it up because I really like the Magnus Chase series, and I want to finish it. And then the last stack is the ones that were like, not super on my radar, but sounded good, and hopefully I will like them. The first one is called Eat My Glow by Simon Magendar. I'm sorry, I'm sure that I butchered that name and I apologize profusely. Um, so this is like a combination travel and food writing. The subtitle is One Man's Search for the Best Food in the World. I'm a big fan of travel writing but I don't read it often enough. Um, and I also like trying new foods. So this just sounded interesting. It was kind of an impulse purchase, um, but I'm looking forward to reading it, especially since I know I haven't actually like talked about my reading goals for 2022 on here because, you know, I've barely posted anything. But one of my goals is to read more nonfiction, which is like a perennial goal, but that's a tangent. Um, then I got The Castaways by Ellen Hildebrand. I have read one or two books by Ellen Hildebrand before, and I liked them, you know, she's pretty solid women's fiction writer. This one sounds like it might have a bit more of a like mystery thriller bent. I think that's actually the section that it was in, although. I really don't think the cover gives it that vibe. Anyway, I figured for a euro, I might as well check it out. Artemis by Andy Weir. Again, like I've heard only good things about all of Andy Weir's books, but I haven't yet read any of them. So this one is in super good condition and um, only one euro, so why not use that as an opportunity to try it. And then I got Mrs. Everything by Jennifer Weiner. Again, she is another author who I really like, so I figured I would pick up something by her that I haven't read, um, especially, again, it's one euro and it's in really good condition. Um, then I got Haruki Murakami's Men Without Women, and I have not Please don't come for me. I have not read any Murakami. I know that he is beloved by many. Um, and the woman who was working there recommended this one. She said that it was really good. The premise sounds really interesting. So I decided to give it a try, or at least buy it and have it on my shelves and hopefully give it a try. Um, same with Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. This one, doesn't super sound up my alley, but again, the woman at the store recommended it. It was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. I always feel like I should read more like literary fiction or like what people consider to be good literature. Um, not that, so I don't feel that like, I think you should read what you want to read. I'm still going to read plenty of YA and stick to my cozy mysteries and romances, but um, sometimes I like to expand my horizons and I'm going to give it a try. And then the last book I got from the church store is this one, Goodbye to All That, Writers on Loving and Leaving New York. So it's a bunch of essays about writers' experiences with New York. And 
I have been super missing New York lately. Um, I don't know if it's, you know, just like winter blues or what's going on, but I have just been feeling kind of sad and kind of wishing that I was still in New York City. And so I thought I could read about other people who have left New York City and we can commiserate even if it's a one-sided thing. Um, so when I saw it, again, this was another impulse nonfiction. I don't normally gravitate toward that, but when I saw it, I kind of had to have it. Okay, so that's everything I got from the church bookstore, but I went to three other stores. So the second store that I went to is called um, Book und Kunst. Again, I am sure that I am not pronouncing that correctly and I apologize. And I had seen when I was doing my searches for secondhand books that you could get books here for like half off. And I thought that was a pretty good deal. So I went and looked. They had a very small selection of English books. Um, they were new but half off, but it was like a very weird selection and every time I go into like the English section of a bookstore in Austria I'm always wondering like who curated this collection because I often see things that I'm just like kind of shocked that it's made it over here because it wasn't getting a lot of attention in the US but that's a tangent this was like some literary fiction, some classics, nothing, some thrillers that you would think would be bestsellers, but like nothing that really caught my eye enough to, you know, seven euros doesn't sound like a lot. But again, these are books that I either like really want to read and like will want to bring home or won't feel bad about leaving behind. So none of them really fit that bill for me. Also, like, all of the books were stacked on tables, but it wasn't like one stack of all the same book. It was a stack of all different books. So you had to like physically pick up each book to see the different books underneath. That just got really tedious after a while and I didn't want to deal with it. So um, I just moved on from that store. The last store that I went to, and I'm skipping one and I will get back to it, the last store that I went to is called Books with an X at the end, and this is sort of the same thing. They had new books, but for a bit of a discount. I'm not sure if they were half off like the other store, but like definitely at least a couple euros discount. So again, it was mostly books that were like seven euros um, for paperbacks, and they had a bit more of a selection in terms of English books, but still not really anything that caught my eye. Again, mostly literary fiction, classics, thrillers. Thrillers seem to be a big thing here, crime fiction. I guess that's, you know, an internationally popular genre, which is great. It's just not really my thing. Um, so I also didn't buy anything there. So the final store that I went to is actually the third store in the order of things, but I wanted to talk about it last because it's my favorite called Chicklet, Chick and it is a queer feminist bookstore, and I just fell in love with it. Um, it's not a store where you can get things discounted, but the previous two times I had gone to Vienna, I wanted to go there, but it's not open on weekends, and I had gone on Saturdays before. So since this time I was going midweek, I was like, I'm going to make it to Chick Lit finally. And I did, and they do not have a huge selection of books in English, but they have like a smallish fiction collection, they have some English titles in different nonfiction sections, and then I found, where are they, in their YA section, which is mostly in German, I did find this hardcover of Clap When You Land. And Sometimes this happens in Austria where I find a hardcover that's like priced like a paperback. And so hardcovers here, if you find them, are usually like 19 or 20 euros, which is a lot. Um, but I found a couple that like, it's not officially on sale or at a discount, but it'll be like 10 or 11 or 12 euros. And so when I saw that this was priced like a paperback, um, I decided I had to have it, and when I checked and saw that it was in English because it was amidst all the German books. Um, so, plus I don't have a finished copy of this one, 
um, I only have an arc at home, so, you know, I need it to match my other books that I have of hers. Um, so I got this one from Jicklet, and then I also got Detransition Baby, which um, I've been wanting to read. I know that it got a lot of attention. I think it's a really interesting concept and unique perspective that we don't see a lot in literature, so um, I am excited to read this one. And again, even though it is an adult paperback, it was priced like a YA paperback, so like, obviously, I wanted to <laughs> use my dollars to support this queer business. Um, but, again, I'm trying not to spend too much on books, so when I found these two that were at, like, kind of a discount, I figured they were good ones to get. Plus, like, first of all, I love Clap When You Land and anything Elizabeth Acevedo writes, and I've been wanting to read Detransition Baby. I maybe wouldn't have bought a copy for myself, I would have maybe gotten it from the library, but I don't feel bad about any of these purchases. So that is everything I got on my big shopping trip to Vienna, and it will definitely help to stock my many shelves here, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, so I guess that is the end of this. If you enjoyed seeing my trip to Vienna and seeing me shopping for used books and walking around the city, feel free to uh, give this a like or a subscribe so I can keep giving you more of what you want. And if you want to leave me a comment telling me a book that you've read recently that you've really loved and I should make an effort to get on my shelves, feel free to do that. And until then, I will see you next time.